And some magic. Um, we did end up getting a Zendikar Rising gift box, which comes with some pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna have him open it real quick so we can show off what's inside. Go ahead. So well, the, this comes yeah, those weren't actually in there. I just made it easier. But it comes with I think nine regular boosters of Zendikar Rising. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, so it comes with ten regular packs, and then it comes with one collector pack, which is pretty cool. Um, and you get all of this for, I think it's about 50 bucks. You only end up really paying $10 for the collector booster um, because you still get the same amount as everything else. So Yeah. And collector boosters are usually $24.99 at a minimum. So it's a pretty good deal because you end up saving $15. It also comes with Very a really true. cool spin down die. Looks gold on the packaging, but when you open it, it's actually silver. So yeah. kind of cool. Love those big ones. The regular Zendikar uh, Rising uh, box like that comes with a green one. So that's kind of cool. Um, they oh, give yeah, a different color. Here, yeah. And then it does come with a pack of regular art lands. And then it comes with a pack that has your box exclusive promo. Which and, is the crab, right? Yep, the crab. And then behind the crab should be 20 foil lands. Yeah. And they're all Which, the same as the other ones. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones out of this set. Just It looks really nice. Um, I, I really enjoy this land. Uh, the, the mountains are pretty cool. Um, the planes are so-so in this one, but yeah, they all look really nice. I'm going to add them to my binder of shiny lands, because every time I go to the commander deck, I have to have spoily basic lands. So, that's what we do. Yeah. Alright, you want to go ahead and start opening it? Yeah, we can. Uh, you want to save collector for last? Yeah, let's do the collector last. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that then. Here. Well. You can get rid of that. This is just the box that we bought our, Zen our commander legends in. It came with three packs. Yeah. Got three of those, I think. Yeah, we got three of these, so I already busted them open, pulled the packs out. We're going to see what we get out of those. What kind of pull rate we got. I'm hoping we have better pull rates, but we'll see. All right. All right. First pack over here. So we have a couple of commons and commons. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with the set. I've been playing it on Arena, so I'm kind of familiar with what's in here. I'm going to go a little bit slow at the beginning just so y'all can kind of see what's going on. And then I'll speed it up. Alright, so our uncommons and then into our rare. Akiri, which is actually the character that's on this picture right here in the back. Which actually came in the gift bundle. So that's kind of oh, cool. Nice. That's our rare. Alright, next one. So this set has a lot of pretty cool things in it. It has landfall, which is pretty cool. Um, I actually really like it. It's actually come back from another set. So... Uh, and then we do have these showcase versions of cards. So this is just a common showcase, but it still has some alternate art. It looks pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh, rogues are one of my favorite things in this set because they mill. The uh, mill didn't really have a lot of creature support um, outside of just like being walls and blockers and defenders. But now we actually have some critters that actually do damage. This guy, whenever he deals damage to a person, they mill a card, so that's kind of cool. Um, he's just a little 1-1 one -one flyer, but if they do have 8 or more cards in their graveyard, you can sacrifice him to draw a card, so that's kind of cool. You can attack with him or block with him and then sacrifice him if they are going to kill him anyways. Um, we did have these cards in this set. These are the dual-sided cards. They help fix your mana ratios, um, so that's kind of cool. And then in this pack, we did have this rare, well, good exploration, an enchantment. It has landfall. It's pretty nifty. And then we did get this foil. It's one of the double-sided ones. It's kind of cool. Keep that aside. Alright. So, I told you a little bit about the set. We're just going to go through now. The it, oh, So the equipments in this set are kind of cool because you pay the one to play them. And then a lot of them will automatically auto-equip the first time you play them. After that, once the creature dies, you have to pay to re-equip them. Another one of my favorite rogues. When he comes into play, he rips a card out of your opponent's hand. So that's kind of cool. Magmatic Channeler. Uh, she's kind of a cool card for instant sorcery deck. So blue-red. Alright. Kicker was another big ability in this set. It's kind of... It can't make a comeback. Um, I don't particularly care for it. Except for on one or two cards that I have in a couple of my decks. Outside of that, Kicker to me is not... And there's no showcase of that guy. Yeah, he's, he's common. He's pretty common. Um, once I find a regular version, I'll show you all what it looks like. Uh, and then our rare for this pack is Master of Winds. It's a Sphinx. Um, yeah, you can you draw cards when she enters, and then 
you play a spell or instant or sorcery, then she become a 4-1 or a 1-4. And then we have a showcase version of the Canyon Jerobo, which he is adorable. <laughs> this goes here. He's art-wise one of my favorite little critters in this, in this set. He just looks super adorable. All right, let's go through this real quick. Got some elves. Freaking, uh, another thing that we had in this set that was kind of popular is uh, having a full party. It's like a and d theme where you have like a rogue, and freaking uh, cleric, and a couple other things. This is a showcase version of this guy. This guy's really popular on Arena right now because if you play a land, he gets a plus two, plus two bump for the turn. If you can bring in Fabled Passage or Evolving Wilds, that's a plus four, plus four bump. So he's a five, five that can't be blocked by anything with a power of two or less. All right. Oh, and then we have Orha. This was a, they had a box topper version of this one that came out for this set too. Alrighty, going on. I like this priest. It's cleric. It goes really good in the red and uh, the black white cleric deck. Uh, Hellhound is in a. It's pretty good for the uh, red stompy decks. The red decks that like to put out little critters. Ooh, Maul Skyclave automatically equips and gives something plus two plus two flying and first strike. I like that in my life game deck. Okay. That priest again. Uh, let's see. Moshpit Skeleton. He's kind of nifty. Mind Garbage is kind of cool. Um, it buffs for how many cards your opponent has in their graveyard. Black Bloom Rogue is another one of those cards that change. And we got a Shadow School Charger. Oh, is that like the, the Centipede Horror thing? What? Where as many uh, things you have in your grave, it goes up and... No, he gets plus three, plus zero, as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. So as long as uh, uh, that one, and then this one, equip creature has plus one, plus zero, and then it gets plus three, plus one instead, as long as an opponent, an opponent has eight or more cards. It goes with the mill mechanic. It's kind of nifty. Oh, okay. The more you mill your opponent, the better benefits you get. Um, let's see. This rogue's kind of cool. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, opponent mills two cards, you can flash fly him in. He's flying a uh, flash creature, so it's pretty nifty. Alright, our rare is Arc Priest of Iona. Alright, then we got these guys. Almost done with this one. Got two packs. We're working through this one. Oh, here's the regular art of the Canyon Jiraboa. Still, it's super adorable. Here's his alternate art. Really shiny. I kind of liked this art a lot, but then when they did this one, I was like, oh, it makes him really look kind of just, you know, badass. So... Uh, he's pretty cute. Uh, oh, I laugh. Um, this guy's kind of nifty. This is a showcase version of him. Um, uh, when he enters the battlefield, you create a zero one green plant creature. A token for every basic land you control. So that's kind of cool. He's coming in on a six, so you, most people have at least four or five. So you're going to get like four or five little green plants. And then when you play a land under your control, you put four plus one plus one counters on a plant that you control. So those little zero one plants become like four fives right off the bat if you play a land so that's kind of nifty uh most people target him right away and try and get rid of him that way you can't keep buffing your pants but eh, it is what it is and then look we got the full art foil of the island that i really like it's probably going to go in one of my decks to be honest um it's really pretty uh last regular pack from this box mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, I need this <laughs> scale the heights was when it first came out, everybody thought it was going to be stupid busted because they banned a growth spiral. But, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature. You gain two life, and then you may play an additional land this turn, and then you get to draw a card. It's kind of nifty. Uh, let's see. Our rare... Ooh, Jace Mirror Mage. That's a planeswalker right there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Jace Mirror Mage is kind of cool. He does have kicker for two, and what he does is he pretty much makes a copy of himself. Um, so it's a copy of it, but it's not legendary. So you initially just get two, this little planeswalker sitting on your board. Um, it's starting low to one, so it's very susceptible to being attacked. But it does have the plus one ability, scry two. Then it has a zero ability, it says draw a card and reveal it. Remove a number of loyalty counters equal to the count, that card's converted mana cost from Jay's Mirror Mage. So, it's a pretty nifty little planeswalker. I don't particularly care for it, because I think the other one's better, but it's what it is. All right, this is our showcase, or um, our collector Focus. pack yeah. uh, from this one. So it's going to be lots of foilies. Uh, you're going to see this right off the bat. Uh, Scaling Heights foil, that's nice. 
uh, another one of my rogues. Ooh, look at that four land. Uh, so it does come with a few lands. Uh, so the first one we have is a swamp. All right, so then we got our extended border ones. This is actually a commander, um, the Zendikar Rising commander uh, card. I think it comes in one of the 1999 commander boxes. Um, but, I mean, this is the only way you can get an extended art like this. So it's in the commander set. So it's kind of cool. Um, then we have, oh, a foil master of the winds. A canopy bailoth showcase. A McKinney ox showcase. Bright Climb Pathway. Dig it. I love these lands. They're amazing. So this one can come in as a Swamp or a Plains. So that's kind of nifty. And they're not, they don't come in tap. So whatever you need at the time, you just play it as that. Grim Climb Pathway. Uh, a Showcase Centipede. And a Foil Extended Art Crag Plate Baloth. Kind of nifty little critter here. He cannot be countered. He has hexproof and haste. And if he's kicked, he enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on him, making him a 10-10. 10-10. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that was it for this box. Um, got some pretty nifty stuff here. I wouldn't say it was, like, really crazy. But um, the Bayloth's kind of cool. He's an extended art foil. This right here, it being extended is really nice not foil but it's okay we can live with that um we got this guy i haven't bought this deck yet so now i have the commander which i think is really the only piece in that deck that is new so i have that card now it's gonna go in my commander stuff the two lands some more little foilies and then yeah here's our rares jace Violeth, arc priest shatter school maul the box topper in the non-box topper form and then the master magmatic vocal exploration and akiri so, that was it in this box. We're going to move on to the next one, which is Commander Legends. Mm -hmm. All right. Starting here with the Commander Legends. That's what we got. All right. Commander Legends was a really cool set. Um, obviously, it was to bump the Commander series. Um, so, you're going to see a lot of legendary creatures in here. That's what you build your Commander decks around. Goblins were pretty big in here, too. Ooh, draw four cards, then discard two. I'm not sure if that's any good, but... Sky Diamond. I do like the diamonds that they had. Uh, they reprinted them, so... Um, I do like them. They're really pretty. Like this one. He's legit sitting there holding a diamond in his hand. It's really pretty. Wish it was foil, but we'll see. Path of Ancestry. Leash, Mindless Automaton. Crocodile. Ooh, Underground Stadium. Um, so these are really good if you're playing in, like, Commander Pods because they're based around you having two or more opponents um, in order to tap untapped, come in untapped. Um, otherwise, they're going to come in tapped. But they do provide two different color mana, so that's kind of nifty. Uh, let's go next. All right, so we got our first legendary creature here. It's a bird wizard. Uh, flying Vigilance, when he attacks, attacking creatures with flying get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. When he blocks, blocking creatures with flying get plus zero, plus two. So he buffs all of your flying guys. Amrath the Lustrous. Um, so a lot of these actually have the foil etched versions of them. Now, since we didn't get collector boosters, we're probably not going to see any. But that's okay. Um, we do have these versions of them. Uh, so when another uh, target or when another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of the library. If it shares a card type with that permanent, you may reveal that card and put it into your hand. So we let you go through your deck and do stuff. Then this is the foil in the pack. Entourage, Entourage of Trust. I kind of like, I kind of dig that. These elves are just looking, you know, badass. Like, they got some shit going on. Alright. Go through these guys. Uh, Wild, Heart, Wild Heart Invoker. I love the art on the card. It's been around for a while. But the art, just every time I see it, it's just... It reminds me of a Tigrex from Monster Hunter, realistically. But, yeah. Angels... Angels are supposed to be really big in the next set, and there's going to be Valkyries and all kinds of stuff. I cannot wait for call time. Ooh, a Chimera. A Chimera Hydra. That is cool. Mm -hmm. um, Apex Devastator. Cost 10 to play. Cascade, Cascade, Cascade. What? You just yes. Cascade. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay, so he's a Cascadey creature. <laughs> he's kind of nifty looking. I like how he has a lion head, a, like a 
goat, I think. Goat, a bird, and a cat. It looks like I don't even it know looks what's like going there's on. A Kevin in there from, there's like, up. so many different critters <laughs> on this thing. I mean, it is a Chimera Hydra, so that's kind of actually really nifty. He's a ten ten. That guy's. Yep, that's probably gonna and go in. Start bringing out a bunch of stuff. Yeah, that's probably gonna go in David's commander deck. To be honest, we'll see. <laughs> Prop of the Steel Legion. I actually have this art on my computer, so if you've seen me stream and I've been at my base screen before, you might have seen the art on this card. But yeah, he's a kitty. Cat soldier. And then we have another artifact creature. A foil tome. Very nice. Oh, and the Prismatic Piper. So they printed this because when you drafted, um, if you got a partner commander or you didn't find a creature that you wanted to be a commander, you could play this guy. Um, and he represents, represents a singular color in your in your commander spot so if you had a blue red or if you had like a white commander card in your pack and you wanted to play white blue this could open up the blue option for you because he could partner um but your other partner did your other commander did have to have partners so that was the only stipulation on that one but that's kind of cool all right next pack Alright, going through here, got some more cool little guys, artifacts, creatures, instant sorceries, oh, salamander rogues, alright, that's kind of interesting. Salamander rogues? Yep, salamander rogues. Oh, rogues, I was like, okay. Fencing Ace is just one one double striker, ooh, Imperius, is perfect. I like the art on this card, I think this elf just looks pretty cool. Her elf is just kind of nifty too. Oh, Neville's Disc. Alright, um, when you're interested about it, it's just about if a tap, and you can pay one, tap it, and destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. If it survives, it can do a lot of damage. It's a board wipe. Alright, Aberration of Lano War. Another legendary creature. You can just make your commander. Ooh, a Fairy Knight. Luna's Trickster. Ooh, yes. Alright, um, this guy's Flash Flying. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of those cards into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Black Blue have a tendency to like to set up their decks. So that's what exactly what this is going to try and do for um, your deck if you run this. Uh, Una's actually a really good commander too. So this is just going to supplement that. And then we have a Hero's Blade Foil. Moving on to the next. Alright. I know I give a lot of information very fast. Bear with me guys. I do talk a little a little bit faster than most people, so if you can't understand me, you will not be alone. Shakashima's protege. We were hoping for Shakashima, but it's okay. Um, this is still a decent card. It's got Cascade as well. Kind of a nifty mechanic. We'll go and look at that. Drago, or Dargo. Uh, he is a partner commander. He says down here at the bottom. So you can partner him with another dual color commander or tri-color commander and open yourself up for another color. Uh, Siani, I have the Storm. Another legendary partner commander. Molder Beast is our foil. And another Prismatic Piper. Okay. Do, do, do. Ooh, Thorn of the Black Rose. I do like this card too. When it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. And it has Death Touch. Monarch is not something I've ever really played with before. So I don't really know entirely how that works. Most of the time, you get benefits for being the monarch, so that's kind of cool. All right, reshape the earth. It's a mythic rare. Search your library for up to 10 land cards, put them on the bottom of the top, then shuffle your library. That says 10 lands, it does not say basic lands, so that can let you fetch just about up to any land card out of your deck as long as it says land. Oh my god, yeah, so that's kind of cool. It does cost wow. a lot of mana, but you know, in commander decks, in the long decks, run, yeah, 10. Oh, Ten lands. They come in tapped. So that's kind of cool. That means next turn you're going to have a minimum of 10 plus whatever lands you had before. Unless you have Seaborn. Yeah. All right. <laughs> do, do, do. Another one of that guy. We've seen him. And a foil fleshbag marauder. Zombie guy. All right. Inspiring roar. Look at that Ajani. Arr. <laughs> <laughs> The familiar is really cute. I really like it. It's one of my favorite foxes in all of Commander. Uh, when you have a field, you gain two life, and then when he dies, you draw a card. <laughs> Annoyed Altasaur. He is not happy. Commander Sphere, basic uh, Commander card that everybody likes to have. Slaughter the Strong. This one kind of made me sad when I saw the art, only because there's a dead dinosaur on there. Like, look at this. This person's so sad. His his dinosaur companion is dead. <laughs> 
And even the flavor text is like, what the heck? It says, cut the beast out from under them and their strength is nothing. Mm. Yeah. Kind of a kind of a mean card. All right. Profane transform, transfusion. Ugh, I cannot talk. <laughs> All right. It says, two target players exchange life totals. You create an XX colorless whore artifact creature token where X is the difference between those players' life totals. Dang. Ooh, Jerry. Master of the Review. We got a cool healing cost, too. Mm. Another legendary zombie and a foil card. Crow of Dark Tidings. I, I like his art, too. There was actually a lot of really good art in this set. Ancestral, Ancestral Blade is an old card, but the art on it is really cool. You see this sword like it's on display, and then in the background you have some dude killing a dragon, which is just <laughs> epic, I think. So that's kind of cool. Um, charcoal diamond. There's a charcoal diamond. So we had a sky diamond, and now we have charcoal diamond. So each of the diamonds are gonna. There's gonna be one for each color. So this one is obviously going to be for black. So it taps for black mana. Sky diamond, I believe, taps for blue mana. Ooh, burnished heart. Burnished heart is another really nifty little land seeking card. Um, you sacrifice them, search your library for two basic land cards, and put them on the battlefield tapped. And. Ooh, Staff of Domin Do Domination. This is a good card. Um, so it's a three-cost artifact, and it's kind of like a Planeswalker. It has these different set abilities. Uh, so for one, you can untap it. For two, and tapping it, you can gain a life. Uh, for three, and tapping it, you can untap target creature. For four, you can you can tap it and tap target creature. And then for five, and tapping it, you can draw a card. So you can do all of these ones down here, right? Let's say tap it, and then just pay one, untap it, and do it all over again. Oh, what? Yeah, so it's kind of cool. Um, and it's an artifact, so a lot of things say, oh, untap target artifact. Or at the end of your turn, your artifact's untap, or whatever. See, this guy's kind of nifty. All right. This is a legendary elf creature that throws uh, counters around. Uh, Miara, it's another little elf, legendary partner. Then you have a foil anamorphous axe and a prismatic piper. Yeah, I'm seeing that those are extremely common. Well, it's because they were to help with drafts, so. Oh, okay. If you didn't get color, if you drafted, like, a lot of green but didn't get a green commander, that could supplement. Mm. That's what those were for. Do, 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 do. Ambush Viper. Love it. It's a snake. I love snakes. I don't know why. Ace Flash, Death Touch. So if they're swinging at something big, something against you big, and you're like, okay, I want it to die, you flash them in, block with it, it's dead. Marble Diamond. This is the white diamond. So it provides the white mana. Murder. One of the best cards in magic. Murder. Destroy target creature. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like it. Kill it. Ooh, Demonic Lore. When it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. At the beginning of your end step, you lose two life for each card in hand. Oh. So let's play our cards then. Training Center. Another one of the lands that requires you to have more than two opponents so again i probably won't play these but i do know people like them when they play in pods so there's a little freaking cute little bird it reminds me of the the owls and the oh, guardians yeah. of gahul <laughs> he's kind of cool Ooh, belby very nice Beginning of each player's post combat main phase that player adds two colorless mana for each of your opponents who lost life this turn and it only costs two, and it's a legendary zombie creature. And then we got a foil, make a la make a stand. It buffs your creatures, and they gain indestructible. And last pack. I feel like David saved this one for last on purpose. We'll see. I, I don't know, we'll see. Oh. I feel like that'd be something you would do, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that something you would do? No, I always just... Usually open them and put them in. Oh, Vault okay. of the Champions, another one of the lands. I do have a black white deck, so we'll see. It probably won't make it in there, but you never know. Uh, Malcolm Keen Eye Navigator, Nadier, Agent of the Duskinal, and ooh, yep, I was right. He saved the best one for last. So we did end up pulling a etched foil. I knew it was going to be. Highly improbable, but it looks like we did it. Um, and this is actually, I'm not sure how you say its name. Ishaya? Ishaya? Ishaya, yeah. 
Um, it's a dragon speaker. So it's a bird monk. It's kind of nifty. Uh, flying, and then whenever an opponent casts a spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, this creature. Um, and it has partner, so you can partner it with another commander that has partner. So it could potentially open you up to all the colors. Pretty nifty little critter. Got some really nice art. I do like the foiling on these etched foils. Um, uh, I think David was a little unimpressed, but... Very unimpressed. Um, I, I like them. He was, I guess, wanting them to be a little more textured, but they still do look really nice, in my opinion. Some of the best foiling that I think they've done in a while, because... I will say that yeah. that is the best foiling that I've seen for Magic, mm. but the way that they advertised it, it made it seem like it would be textured. Yeah, because I remember you freaking out when they showed the yeah. dragon one. You were like, oh my god, it just looks so nice. I, like, I need it right now. <laughs> it's textured. I love my textured cards. This needs to be a thing. Kitty! And look. Foil cat token. Um, there's some tokens. I guess he didn't want us to show off. It's okay. That's just the tokens. Yeah. Landing, like, so. But that is it, y'all. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I talk a lot when it comes to magic. I don't talk as much when it comes to the other card games because I don't I don't, I don't know. When it comes to Dragon Ball, we usually only open during pre release, and I don't really look at the cards until we get them. And then with Pokemon, I just. I do say something when I see the cards, yeah. and I'm like, oh, that's actually a really good card. But Magic is my game. That's my baby. David doesn't really know a lot about it. So when it comes to that, I'm usually on in lead on that one. So this did come in the actual yeah. gift box, too. So you see Kiri on that side. <laughs> Squirrel. And then <laughs> these guys. I think this is. I'm mean, not even sure what this art is from. I don't remember. That does look cool. Oh, it's just something I threw together. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.